Welcome back to the series. Over the last videos, we already worked quite a bit on our RESTful API and I like how it looks and works really great. Now, we added some routes and so on, it's now time to improve our development setup a little bit at least and I also want to make sure that we improve error handling because we're not really handling errors in our API as of now. So first of all, what I want to improve regarding the setup is I don't constantly want to restart the server whenever we make a change to anything. For this, we can use a package called nodemon. We install it with the npm install and then dash dash save dev because it really is only a development dependency we need. And then the name is just nodemon. Just download it like this. This is a package which will basically monitor your files and automatically restart the server whenever you change something. A link to the package can be found in the video description and there you can learn more about it. So now with that nodemon was added, I now also want to no longer manually type node server, but instead with nodemon, we would have to type nodemon server.js. That however will fail because it's not a global package installed on our machine. Now we can easily work around this by going to the package.json file and adding a script. Let's add the start script. That's a special script we can easily execute by running npm start inside our project folder. And when we type this, I want to run nodemon. Here I can use that because this will now not search for it on our search system, but in our project and there we just installed it. So then I want to execute nodemon server.js. Now if I run npm start here, you see, we got this output here, it looks a little bit different than before. And it essentially started our server. So if I go back to Postman and I try my requests again, this still works because we got a Node.js server. But watch the console if I added something. So here I'll simply add a comment, routes which should handle requests. And now if I save this file, you see, it's restarting the server, even though here I didn't add any logic that would have required that, but it watched the file and saw that I changed it. And this also works for files and subdirectories. Here, if I say handle incoming get requests to slash orders, and I save this, it also restarted. So this is really convenient. Now we don't have to manually cancel the server and restart whenever we make a change. Additionally, I want to add a logging package to my setup to log incoming requests so that we can also see some information here in the terminal. So for that, I'll temporarily quit nodemon and install another package with npm install dash dash save and it's called morgan. It's a logging package for node.js. We can use it really easy. Just go to app.js and there, let's create a new constant Let's name it Morgan and require, the name is by the way totally up to you, require Morgan. This name is not up to you, that has to be the package you installed. And now we have to basically tell Express to funnel all requests through this middleware that it is in the end. And Morgan will then just log something and let the request continue. So Morgan behind the scenes will call this next function saying, I don't return a response. I just did something, in this case I locked something, you continue doing your work. So let's use Morgan and let's use it before we handle our request with our routes by simply saying app use and then use Morgan as a function and pass dev here. That's the format we want to use for the output. Now with that, let's rerun npm start to restart nodemon. And if I now again send a request here, it looked as before, but you see now in the terminal, we get this extra log seeing that we got a get request and how long it took and so on. So that's really nice. Additionally, I now want to handle errors. Keep in mind, if we send a request to some invalid ID or with some invalid HTTP verb, we get back this default error HTML page. And I want to send back JSON instead. Now, error handling is really nice in this setup here. 
Keep in mind that we have here our middleware, which forwards requests to products and orders files, where we then have the router. On the other hand, that means if we make it past these two middlewares, none of the routes set up in either of the two files were suited to handle the incoming request. Hence, we can handle errors by simply catching all requests that make it past these two requests here, or these two middlewares, I should say. So we can simply use the app object and now use and no longer add a filter like slash something, but simply say, I want to handle every request that reaches this line. Because if you reach that line, it means no route in one of these two files was able to handle the request. So here in this middleware, I again have my request response in the next function. And now I simply want to return an error here. So I will create a new constant error and create a new error here. The error object is uh, available by default. You don't need to import it or anything like that. And here I want to output not found as a error text. I will also set a error status code, excuse me, that should be error. So that error object is provided by Node.js and I can set a status code of 404. Because here, we get here if we have an error because we didn't find a fitting route, which is the definition of a 404 error. Then I will actually execute this next method and pass my error along with it. This will now forward the request, but forward this error request here instead of the original one essentially. Now I'll add another middleware here where I also get my request response and next, but I get a separate first argument, which actually is my error. And this here will handle all kinds of errors, like the error we create here and we forward, or, and that is why I chose this setup, errors thrown from anywhere else in this application. This shouldn't really be able to happen yet, but later when we add a database, for example, and when we have some operations doing work on the database, these operations could fail. And we then want to return a 500 error. Now, if these operations fail, they will directly throw an error, so we don't make it into this first middleware. But since they throw an error, this middleware here would be triggered and it would handle this error or get this error. So here we can set a status code on the response we eventually want to send back, which is either the status code the error has, like it has if we created our 400 error, 404 error, or we assign a 500 error code for all other kinds of errors. And then we can simply return some JSON data here and we could have chained that as I did in the router setup, so that would have worked too. And there I want to send an error object, which maybe should have a message property. And this setup is totally up to you, set it up as you want. And there I will pass on my error message, like the message, this should also be error by the way, the uh, message of the error we get as a first argument. Here the message would automatically be not found, and for other errors, whoops, fix the typo, for other errors, these typically also have a message property. It's kind of what most errors have. You can pretty much rely on them having a message object, a message property. And now we will return this. So let's try this out. Let's save this and NodeMon will restart. And now let's again send an invalid request. Now you see we get back a... Uh, uh, a method and an answer here. Error status is not a function. It nicely proves that the automatically thrown error has a message property because that's not our own error. And I did indeed mess this up here. We should assign an error status property of 404, not a method. So now let's try this again. And now we get not found, which again is our custom message, this one. And so I accidentally, but it's also kind of good, I guess, proved that both our custom 404 handler as the I handle all other kinds of errors, like my error with the unknown function here, both work. And with that, we got automatic reloading, we got default logging, 
and we got error handling, which is a great improvement to our project. With that, let's leave it as it is and let's go back into our project and make sure that we add more useful functionalities to it in the next videos.